chapter five. Um, celebration story. Christine Price on breaking up. I had been saved for 10 years and I was still a virgin. But at the age of 19, I gave that up to a young man who I thought I was going to marry. I didn't think there was a reason to wait. I read and the bride wore white and although it convicted me, I didn't do anything about it. Finally, the guilt was too much. I picked up the book again and reread the breaking up is too hard to do. It was an inspiration. I broke up with my boyfriend of one year and it wasn't easy at all, but with a strong peer support group and God, I got through it. My relationship with God has gotten so much stronger. I have already been able to use my experiences to help other young girls by teaching and the bride wore white purity classes at my church. I'm so glad that I had this book to help guide me when I needed it most. So this is some uh, chapters called Breaking Up is Hard to Do. Breaking up sinful relationships in three steps. Um, and um, Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, um, NLT version. Throw off your old evil nature and your former way of life, which is wrought and through and through, full of lust and deception. Instead, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. You must display a new nature because you are a new person, created in God's likeness, righteous, righteous holy, and true. Just look at this, I said, irritated with my lack of self-control. My journal is full of it. Break up. Make up. Break up. Make up. I handed my journal to Lisa Payne, pointing to the most recent set of entries. It's over. Michael and I told each other we loved each other several times, and I know we do. I know this is right, but it doesn't take the hurt away. Entry. Um, the next entry. We are together again. Crazy, huh? He called at midnight last night, and we worked it out next century my spiritual condition has only worsened i want to be in god's will but i'm only halfway there so i'm not at all there lisa closed the journal and gave me a penetrating glance in that split second we both remembered that breakup that had happened 10 months previously we had spent the night that night sitting together crying and holding each other she had recently lost her father to cancer i felt like i'd lost my heart to a spiritual cancer in our individual pain we had felt the other person's pain i remember telling her how stupid i felt crying over a stupid boyfriend when her pain was caused by a much more significant loss hey at least i have someone to ball with she had sniffled passing me a new box of tissues we both laughed that really great grief laughing that only comes to visit in the midst of a good long cry and hours later he had called We'd gotten back together, and I felt really rotten for leaving her alone in her moment of pain while I waltzed back down the easy road. Well, she said, snapping back to the present, you know what you have to do. Break this relationship up for good. I'm not going to make this easy for you this time. Lisa was always saying parent, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lisa was always saying personhood before partnership. It was her dating motto, and a good one at that. My relationship was clearly one that partnership, I'm sorry, that put my partnership before my own personal development and unfortunately my relationship with God. You're a great friend, I said sarcastically. I reached for the telephone. It seemed as if it took an hour for my heavy hand to reach the receiver. I dialed his number, then looked at Lisa. She was standing at the door, ready to leave, offering me a few moments alone to do what I needed to what needed to be done. Hello, said a warm, familiar voice that belonged to me. Hi, was all I could get out. What's wrong? he said, reading my voice without hesitation. I was silent. Dana, he said, plead pleadingly. How I love to hear him say my name, I thought. Maybe I can talk to him for a few minutes first. Absorb the last few moments of us. It's over. Oh, Dana, he pushed. It's over, I said coldly. Like a child releasing an animal back into the wild, knowing only a cruel release would send him off. I do not want this anymore. Our relationship is not what God wants for our lives right now, I said. I have to let you go. You have to let go, too. He was silent. He'd never been silent before. I believe that his desire was also to live within God's blessing, and he understood that meant ending our relationship. After a few moments, we both quietly hung up the phone. I reached for my journal to cry out to my God as tears fell silently down my cheeks. <clears throat> and the journal entry. My heart is cold and numb. I mean, it's so intense. I feel an actual heaviness in my chest. Lord, in your heavenly plan, what are you teaching me? How long does it take? My my will crosses yours. My will has to die. Lisa had come back. She wrapped her arms around me, and I collapsed into them. We cried again. This time, he didn't call back. 
if you have if you have given your heart or your body to someone else and you have been feeling a, a, a twinge of discomfort as you've read the past few chapters, that is probably the Holy Spirit speaking to you. As I write this, I have been asking him daily to work in your life. Is he? Well, you can be 100% sure that if he is, it is because he has an awesome plan for your life. It is even greater than what you could possibly imagine. I know that you think this guy is the love of your life. You cannot see down the road yet. You cannot see anyone even coming close to this young man. But God has a plan that is so much better. Right now, you have a tough decision to make. It doesn't make it... It doesn't matter if you have dated for one month or five years or if the relationship became sexual or it was just squeezing in on your love life with Jesus. Breaking up is hard to do. But scripture is clear over and over again that we must walk away from anything that hinders our love for God. The verse above says to throw off your former way of life. I know that is not easy. I really cannot make the process less painful for you, but I can give you a step-by-step -step plan for walking through it. So step number one, tell God. Right before I broke up with my boyfriend, I had gotten into the word of God. God gave me the strength and conviction to make right choices. He was so tender about it. The book of Ezekiel paints a very ugly picture of how a hard-hearted hard -hearted Israel had been toward the God who loved them and who considered himself Israel's lover. At one point, God told Ezekiel to describe Israel as a helpless, bloodied newborn left lying in a field with, un with the umbilical cord still hanging from it when God showed up to lovingly clean it, clothe it, and care for it. It's kind of gross. Huh. But God really wanted us to see in that picture that he would love us no matter how he found us. Then as Israel grew to become a woman, she took God for a brief moment as her love. Then she proceeded to take the wonderful garments, jewels, and gifts her love had made her and give them to her other lovers. This caused great hurt to the God, to the God of the universe, as again and again Israel chose to love everything but him. In Ezekiel 11, this great patient lover said, It's time to come back to me. But how would Israel ever accomplish that? She had had children with her other lovers. She had memories, houses, possessions as a result of her other relationships. Israel's true love showed up with a great gift in Ezekiel 11:19, when he said, I will give them an undivided heart. Verse 20 goes on to say, then they will be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. He knows you have memories. He knows you have possessions, songs, and nicknames. You understand how terribly painful breaking up can be. And he wants to hold your heart in his hand and cause it to be undivided so you can go through with it. He does not expect you to prove yourself back into his heart by doing this tough thing without him and then coming into his presence. Start by talking to God and receiving his gift of an undivided heart. What exactly do I mean by an undivided heart? Of course, I'm speaking of your heart figuratively, as we often do when we talk of love and devotion. The figurative heart is the central organ of your emotional and spiritual life. Let's compare it to the physical heart, which is the central organ of your physical life. When someone's heart is healthy, the four chambers beat in rhythm. What would happen if half of the heart decided if it wasn't feeling much like working with the other half? You might have palpitations, or your heart might skip a beat. It could hurt a lot, or you could barely notice. It would not be an immediate death sentence, but your body would become weaker and weaker. If that half of the heart kept resisting the responsibility to do its job in conjunction with the other half, eventually that divided heart would ruin the quality of your life, and it might one day actually kill you. Our figurative hearts are like that. I hope that, like me, there was one day when you sat before the great loving God of the universe and said, okay, I'm not perfect, I sin. That makes me unworthy of being in your presence. I know I really deserve death, but thank you so much for sending your dear son, Jesus, to die in my place. I accept the precious gift of eternal life through his death. From now until eternity, my heart belongs to you. From that moment on, your figurative heart's job is to pump in tune with the heart of God. But if the side of your heart that handles the emotions gets caught up in an ungodly or distracting relationship pattern or habit, you've got the same condition as you would if you, your physical heart were beating out of sync. Your emotions, spiritual drive, and the quality of life suddenly begin to ebb away. Your figurative heart simply cannot stand to be out of rhythm any more than your physical heart can. And there's a side thing. God can reach the pain. I know that breaking up is hard to do. I know 
The pain is something no one else can seem to reach. Understand that God can bear heights of, of, of loneliness, a wilderness whose burning winds sweep over glowing sands. Where are they to him? Even there he can refresh us. Even there he can renew us. That's from um, Windows by Amy Carmichael. All right, so write your story. Take a moment and beg God for an undivided heart. Even if you don't have a relationship right this very moment, but you are consumed with a desire to be with a guy, you must begin to ask for this undivided heart. Go to God. Tell him about the memories, the hopes, the dreams. Ask him for an undivided heart. Do it. All right, so part two. Tell a friend. Just because God begins to work in you does not mean your human heart won't find it very difficult to stay on course. I couldn't have broken up with my boyfriend without Lisa to bear the load with me. She was a very important element in regaining my strength to live a life of purity. I suggest you find one or more friends to shoulder the burden for two reasons. They can test what you are thinking and they can encourage you or give you courage to stay on course. You need to you need to talk to that friend before you call your boyfriend and give him the chance to fall on your heart chains. Um, that's like my sister. <coughs> She always makes me feel like crap, but it's a good thing. I need it. I need that, but like you know, kicking the butt because I'm a little too fresh. So thank you. I still do this in my life. Mostly, I go to my husband and say, "This is what I feel God telling me about this. Can you encourage me?" I also use other wise counselors, such as my mother and other godly women, to borrow courage. This past week, a special senior hire in my youth group broke up with her boyfriend. She needed to do it, but it was very painful. She told a Christian friend. The friend encouraged her and suggested she write a letter so she could have everything thought out and so that she could not be sweet talked out of. Uh, sorry, she could not be sweet talked out of her commitment. Then the friend told her to make a copy of the letter to go back to for courage in the weeks to come. It was good advice from a good friend. Tell a friend what you sense God saying so that you can test it and so that the friend will encourage you to go through with it. Number three, step three, make a fast strategic exit. I wish we could ask Joseph about Potiphar's wife. She was one of the richest and most popular women in Egypt. I bet the, I bet she took Egyptian mud baths and had her feet waxed to keep off the dust. Come to think of it, she probably never walked through the dust. They probably carried her around Egypt in some kind of gold-plated seat. I envision milky skin and jet black hair in that classic Egyptian cut. In fact, she may have started that hairstyle craze. Do you get where I'm going? I think she was a hot item. But in Genesis 39, Joseph didn't think twice about running and fast. If you have a relationship that provides you with temptation to sin or that simply distracts you from your love of God, it needs to be discontinued immediately. Joseph is a great example of a man who knew how to make a fast, fast strategic exit. I am very proud of a girl named Lana. She was a brand new baby Christian when she came to my retreat. Her current boyfriend had introduced her to Jesus. At the retreat, she admitted that there was pressure in the relationship to be physical, despite the fact that they both loved God so much. The day after the retreat, she broke up with him. Now that's a fast strategic exit. That would have impressed Joseph. Guess what? Shortly after the retreat, her ex got a girl pregnant. He had to quit college to get a job that could have been Lana, Lana but it wasn't. Where do you stand with this issue of breaking up? Is there a relationship you have had in the recent past that still causes pain? Go to God for an undivided heart and find a friend to give you courage. Are you still in a relationship that needs to be ended? Start with an intense talk with God. Beg for that undivided heart. Then find a friend to borrow courage and make that fast strategic exit. Maybe you are not in or have never been in a relationship that needs to be cut off. Bravo. The seven secrets are just around the corner and they can help you never have to make this choice. And um. I would say also, just to make sure, um, if you really want to make sure and really be like, oh my god, do I really have to break up with him? How about you fast? Because then you'll be in the spirit. Spend time with God. Don't just starve yourself. You know, spend time digging in his word and, and he will speak to you. Um, um, and also, like a lot of girls think, you know, just because you're with a Christian guy, then nothing can go wrong. And, you know, sometimes you don't know, it'll be like the first Christian guy you date or whatever, and you don't know what the heck the rules are. But um, you can sense it. Your body can sense it. The Holy Spirit will let you know. If you feel guilty, it's for a reason. And um, But also, let's say if you just mess up once or whatever, sometimes you just need to take a break. Just because you break up doesn't mean it has to be eternal. You can never, ever be together again. You know, 
but you got to be more afraid of losing God than losing that boyfriend or that guy. So that's my piece. <laughs>